Hi, I'm Josh Kitty of the Oklahoma City Thunder, and this is my time capsule. Twelve and a half points, seven and a half rebounds, and six and a half assists. I'm averaging sixteen points, eight rebounds, and six assists. I have 340,000 Instagram followers and I have 495,000 TikTok followers. Instagram, I have, I think about 430 something thousand followers. TikTok is about 750,000 followers. My last post uh, was like a little photo dump, just a bunch of photos from the last, you know, two or three weeks. I like to do that every so often. I gave my Instagram away uh, earlier this year. I didn't want to see anything on social media. Nothing bad was happening or anything. I just uh, wanted to get off it. Back on it now, I just felt like I was missing out on so much. I want to achieve as many wins as possible with our team. We've got a young team, so the more we can grow and learn together, the better it's going to be going forward and for the future. I think we have, you know, not many. I think maybe like 20, somewhere in the 20s this year. Um, and hopefully next year it can be up. Our goal always internally was to, to be a playoff team. And the guys that we've had have, have grown a lot. You know, the new guys that have come in have really helped us. So it's obviously exciting. We're all in very similar parts of our careers um, in the early stages. So uh, it's a very tight group. There's a lot of tough players in the NBA that you have to guard every night. You know, Steph was one of the toughest, Devin Booker. I mean, these guys were my matchups, but you know, when you get switched onto them, um, they're always tough guys to guard. I don't necessarily have to guard these guys, but when I've got switched onto, I'd say uh, Steph and Damian Lillard, I think their ability to shoot from pretty much anywhere when they cross that half court line, you have to pick them up high. I still think, you know, guys target you, you know, when you're a young guy in the league. Probably a left to right crossover. I've done that for a while, the left to right crossover. My favorite move now is probably spin move. I've started doing it a lot when I get into the paint, spin move into a floater. I'd say smart. Um, IQ and pass first. I'm not the most athletic, not the fastest, strongest guy, but I think, you know, those things you can't really be taught. I'm a lot bigger than the average guard um, at that size. I do things, you know, my own way. I'd say my parents are the big ones that inspire me. Um, from a young age, they, they played basketball for a long time in their careers. Um, they coached me all the way up through my junior career and they've had a big impact on you know, where I'm at today. My parents definitely do still inspire me. Uh, they're, they're the main two. That's, that's who you do it for. It's, if you ask any player in the league, my sister lives with me. She goes to, um, she plays college basketball in Oklahoma. And she was actually there before I was. So it worked out well. I got drafted to where, you know, the city she was at and my younger sisters, um, they still go to school back in Australia. So it's just trying to, you know, coordinate that. But obviously really close to my mom and my dad. The first one is probably getting healthy. The second thing I'm excited for is going back, seeing my family and friends back home in Australia um, after the season. I mean, third one, I'm excited for the off season, just to, you know, it's it's the most important time of the year, I think, when guys separate themselves from the rest of the, you know, the NBA and um, so many things I got to work on. Hopefully a, a playoff run. The World Cup's this summer, so I'm excited for that to represent my country. Really excited to go back home and see all my um, friends and family that I haven't been able to see. You know, I haven't been home in 12 months, so it'll be good to see everyone when I get back. Yeah. Probably the peace and quiet. Um, there's no traffic, everything's 10 minutes away. I love the city, I mean, I'm, I'm a big fan of it. It's different to where I'm from. I'm from a really busy city, there's always stuff happening, but um, Oklahoma's nice and quiet. Oh, uh, the people, the nicest people um, I've met. They're all big Thunder fans in that city. It's a small city. I'm sure the other guys will tell you as well, when, we, when we're out about in town, um, the, the people around are so respectful, so, so good to us. Driving on the other side of the road, um, the steering wheel's on the other side of the car. You can turn right at red lights. A lot of Australian America is really similar just in terms of how, you know, everyday life kind of operates. The one actual big one is in Australia, there's no free refills at restaurants. You gotta pay for every drink you get. I am not dating anyone right now. Same, same answer as 12 months ago. You know, a lot of my teammates have, have had girlfriends for, for a number of years now. So I'm one of the unlucky few ones that doesn't have one, but I'm sure I'm 20, so that, that'll come uh, in due time. Probably have a, a short-term memory um, was the best piece of advice I ever got, was just, you're playing so many games, there's 82 games in the season, and then, you know, plus playoffs, if you make that, um, you can't dwell on one game or one bad possession. The one thing I've heard a lot is keep the main thing the main thing. In my case is, you know, keep basketball the main thing. At this point in my career, um, there's a lot of distractions in, in this lifestyle, and for a young guy that's, you know, you're trying to cement yourself in the NBA, um, you want to keep basketball the number one priority. 
Probably adjusting, you know, on the defensive end has been my biggest challenge this year. Just, you know, a lot of guys, especially the superstars, will kind of pick out rookies and try and get them in action to have them switch onto them. LeBron was the big one. He, you know, he pointed at the guy I was defending to send him a ball screen and get me to switch into it. Probably another challenge for a rookie is, you know, you hit the rookie wall, they talk about midway through the season, you, you've never played that many games before. That can be challenging. And then they talk about sophomore, when they say sophomore slump. And I had that, you know, earlier in the season. Um, there was probably, you know, a three week stretch that I was really struggling. Felt like I couldn't do anything right out there on the floor. Um, but when you talk to other guys around the league, you know, you feel alone in the moment, but everyone goes through it. Um, it it's completely normal. I do the same workout every time before the game uh, with Mike, my coach. So I'm in the weight room, I'm on the court, then I'm with the physios, and then we have a team meeting, and then we are into our team warm-ups on the floor. So it's the same every time, and that never really changes. Yeah, um, I've never really been a big, you know, ritual guy. I don't really take naps. I don't do anything, you know, out of the ordinary on game days. I eat the same meal, chicken and rice, and a banana shake before every game. I like to get off my feet a little bit. I'll be in bed from about, you know, 11.30 till, 3.34 whenever we leave, and I probably won't get out of bed for that you know, four hour time. The most I've spent is probably like a few thousand on one thing. Louis Vuitton like jackets, a few like off-white shoes. Since last year, probably be um, a car for my mom. Um, I got her a BMW. I got into watches a fair bit. You'd be surprised at how much, you know, flights end up adding up, especially in the off season when you're constantly moving around. I'd say Louis Vuitton and Dior are probably two. My favorite Dior piece would probably be like, I have this puffer jacket. My favorite Louis Vuitton thing would probably be this denim jacket that I have. Uh, I've wore a lot of Balenciaga uh, last couple of years. I like designer brands, but um, there's also other brands. Rick Owens, I've got into a fair bit. My favorite one, and it was my dream one, was being with Nike, being a Nike athlete. For all my life, um, I watched all my you know, role models represent Nike, like Kobe, uh, Kevin Durant, LeBron. One we've got, we're working on at the moment, um, big Australian one, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say it or not, but um, I grew up um, a lot around this product and um, I'm excited to do something with them. We actually did a thing with a, a cereal called uh, Wheat Bix, which is like the equivalent of like Wheaties here. So when you go into like supermarket to buy them, I'm on like the boxes of those um, cereals. So we've done a few things back home, but um, yeah, I mean, as you grow in the NBA, obviously the endorsements start to pick up a little bit more. I've got a financial manager advisor who takes care of all my stuff. Having those people in your corner that are telling you, to, you know, be smart with your money, um, invest it, do all this stuff with it, just so you're good for the long run, your kids can be good for the long run, their kids, you know, the more money you can create with the money you get now, um, the better you're gonna be for the future. I mean, I obviously agree with everything I said in that, but as you get deeper in, you start to realize that it's not just the NBA checks you get, it's a lot of the off the court stuff, uh, you get endorsements, you know, you get a licensing check. We, we got a check for being under the salary cap a certain amount. So there's a bunch of different things. And ever since I got drafted, um, you know, all I wanted to do was, was take care of my family. That was the main thing. Outside of that, just continuing to um, invest, um, do the right things with my money uh, was important because you know, nothing's ever guaranteed. You know, if God forbid something could happen tomorrow, I can never play another game again. You know, it's easy for young guys to come in. They've never seen this type of money. They spend it. They're out the league in two years and they, they have nothing left. So. I'm uh, being smart with it, but um, yeah, I think I've got the right people around me and um, that's never going to be a problem.